You're listening to the Weekend Sport Podcast with Jason Pine from Newstalk ZB. Super Rugby, Super Round, underway in Melbourne. All 12 teams are there. Six games across three days. Last night, Blues Highlanders. Blues go down the blind and Hoskins at 2-2 has a hat-trick. Scored two last week, got three tonight and that should be enough for the Blues. Final score. The Blues, 37 Highlanders 29. Yeah, Hoskins to Tutu starting the season well. A hat-trick of tries powering the Blues to that 37-29 win over the Highlanders as called there by Elliot Smith last night. The Melbourne Rebels then came from behind to beat the West in force 48-34. Tonight it is Moana Pacifica against the Fijian Drua 5 past 7. Crusaders Waratahs to follow at 9.35. Tomorrow the Chiefs Brumbies at 4 and the Hurricanes up against the Reds at 6.30. Andy Ellis has been watching it all unfold. We're just getting Andy on the phone to uh, to give us a close-up view of what uh, he expects to play out at Amy Park over the next uh, two uh, the next two days, obviously starting today and then heading into tomorrow. Just while we're getting Andy, we just want to wrap the athletics for you. The World Indoor Champs in Glasgow, Tom Walsh, silver this morning in the men's shot put with the best throw of 22.07. Ryan Krauser won the gold. He threw it 22.77 metres. In fact, all but one of Ryan Krauser's five valid throws was further than Tom Walsh's best throw. So it just goes to show Ryan Krauser and the uh, the gap he has back to the rest of the field. Jack O'Gill, a season's best, 21.69 to finish fifth. Uh, earlier, Maddie Lee Weshi placed fourth in the women's shot put final with a best throw of 19.62 metres. More from the uh, World indoor athletics champs over the next couple of days but let's get you to Melbourne watching Super Round unfold 28 test All Blacks halfback and World Cup winner Andy Ellis uh, who is with us now, how did you enjoy the first couple of games in Super Round last night Andy? G'day, mate. Yeah, no, it was great, it was, um, it was a fun atmosphere the weather was beautiful too, it was the mid-20s which was great um, and I don't know, it's quite, quite unique to be able to sit there through kind of two games of of footy in, in Melbourne and enjoy some couple of cold beers in the, in the stands too. It was a, it was a good, good atmosphere. Nothing wrong with it. Cold beer, nice weather. Um, did you sniff a Highlanders upset against the Blues, especially in the first half? Yeah, I was close, wasn't I? At one point there, I was, you, you sort of thinking, you know, the Highlanders must have been frustrated they weren't up, weren't up by more, you know. And but the Blues hung in there, and they've they've kind of got a bit bit of a, a bit of a harder edge, don't they? The Blues this year, it kind of appears like, you know, they're prepared to go through the middle a little bit more and. Their wingers are coming in and, and doing a lot of work too, and uh, yeah, kind of uh, they sort of end up sort of just running away with a little bit. As far as the Highlanders are concerned, they still just find it uh, very, very difficult to beat uh, a New Zealand opponent. I think it's seventeen straight derbies now without being able to to break through and, and win one. Did you see enough from them last night to suggest that you know they might have a better season in twenty twenty four? Is that right? Seventeen. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, they've, they've got a they've got a class squad there, and I think they've got, um, you know, obviously they've got a full pack that's that's pretty physical and 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 good around their set piece. Um, they're going to give good ball to the backs, and I think saw glimpses of um, some classy classy stuff from their backs as well. But it factor there, you know, and um, which is which is encouraging for them. They just need to put it all together now, and I suppose. You know, it's just a bit of a confidence thing now, isn't it? You know, they've got the squad there and they're playing great footy. They just need need to break that 17-game losing streak against the Kiwi teams and, and, you know, then they'll hopefully kind of turn the corner and be away. Yeah, I want to move on from, from them in a sec. But just on Falau Whakatawa, obviously Aaron Smith's been halfback there forever, uh, your area of particular expertise. Do you think Falau Whakatawa's got what it takes to... To grab because he's often been in the in the twenty one jersey, hasn't he? The guy coming off the bench. Do you think he's got it in him to grab the nine jersey for the Highlanders and then even you know press his claims again for the All Blacks? Absolutely, he started so well, hasn't he? And I know he was particularly good in those preseason games as well. Um, you know, he's come back. He, he looks in great shape. Um, got some real X factor to his game. But the thing I, I like the most is his core role as a nine is very good as well. You know, he's got a Great pass, got a really accurate kick. Um, defense is good. He's he's pretty good marshal around the around the field too. You know, I was watching him yesterday. I was actually sitting with uh, Willie Hines watching that game, and um, yeah, we were sort of commenting on it. He was he's, he's got a really nice half that game, and then to add to that is that kind of bit of flair and X factor. You've you've sort of almost got to watch him around those rucks, don't you? Because he'll he'll have a crack and or, or you know, put on that beautiful wee grubber, didn't he? You know, for 
for one of their tries. And, you know, just, just wee moments like that, you think oh, there's, there's some real X factor there that keeps defences on their toes. Yep, long mark continue. Second game last night, Rebels Force. Uh, Rebels 48, thir- uh, Force 34. Uh, the only genuine home team there this weekend. How much of a boost would it have been uh, for the Rebels to get a win um, off the back of what's been a pretty troubling time for them? Yeah, huge for them. You know, and I, th- I think at one point was it they were the Force were hit by 20 points, something yeah. like that. And, um, and yeah, the Rebels managed to come back. And, I, and you know, we're, again, we're sort of sitting in that member stand, so a lot of, lot of uh, Rebels fans there that were all cheering them on. Um, but you know, it was, it was it was good to see for them, you know, in front of their home crowd, and, and what's been a pretty tough sort of, uh, you know, few months for them really um, to put in a performance that uh, you know they'll be really proud of, and especially being a Australian derby match, um, you know, good on them for, for getting through. But uh, I think the force will be disappointed. They they played some great footy and just sort of let them off the, the hook at the end, you know. I oh, know Super Round was scheduled a long time ago and there was probably a bit of a sense of trepidation with their well-publicised recent troubles, the Rebels. Uh, has there been an undercurrent of that in Melbourne, just a little bit of uh, you know, a realisation that the, the Rebels' life as a, as a Super Rugby team might be coming to an end? Yeah, I mean, there are. There's, people, are people are sort of wondering what, what's going to happen you know, in, the, in the coming years with the Rebels, you know, just because of what's been out there in the media. Um, but, but at the same time, there's... there's it's a real kind of community feel to rugby here. It's it's quite unique, and uh, there's something quite special about it. You know, we, you know, I've been over here for the NZR Plus app. You know, we're doing doing a daily show on that. Um, and one of the things we did is get, went to a, some club rugby, and people really love it here, and they get really in behind it, and they're really proud of supporting rugby here. And so it, it would be a real shame to lose rugby here um, because of that feel. So yeah, ho- hopefully they can kind of get a few things right um, and that's the, the, the whole super round can, can continue in Melbourne because man, it is some place here you know we've, we've had a lot of fun over the last couple of days um, and it's great you see a lot of kind of stag dudes arrive in and um, you know people coming into Melbourne to really enjoy this whole whole weekend of rugby and um, yeah it's, it's something that I think has got real legs if they can sort of stay in the fight here. All right. Well, let's uh, let, well, let's hope they can. It would be great. It would be great if they could. A uh, couple of couple of games to look forward to today. I want to jump to the Crusaders Waratahs because there's a very very raw halfback first five pairing for the Crusaders tonight. Taha Kimata first five going to be the youngest guy to play first five uh, for the Crusaders since Dan Carter. He's only twenty. Noah Hotham there at halfback. Uh, keen on your thoughts on Noah Hotham. Have you seen much of him? Yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah. No, the, um, yeah, he's got a he's got a lovely game. You know, again that. That core skill set is the first thing you kind of look at um, in that nine roll because you've got to be able to throw a good hard pass and be accurate with it, right, and get to breakdowns quickly and have a have a strong kicking game. So, you know, it, it's it's a good opportunity for him. You know, he's um, he got some he's been getting some good time, you know, recently, and now he gets his start. And the the cool thing about these two, did you know they played um, Hamilton first fifteen together? Yes, um, yes. No, and Kaha. So uh, there's something quite nice in that. See the the boys kind of go through that and end up, you know, playing top level rugby together. So they'll have, they'll have a, hopefully have a lot of fun out there. Um, you know, again, talk, talking to Willie and, and Berg Burke was, was there as well. Um, they said he's had, he had a really good pre-season. You know, there's nothing between those two teams at the Crusaders now. So this is Kaha's sort of chance, I know, to, to stake his claim. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes a bit of being young and inexperienced can be a good thing because you just go and play with, with that freedom and, uh, You've got Dave Harvelli at 12 too. He's extremely experienced, and he'll really help those boys out. So I'm re- that's probably the, the the big big one I'm looking forward to seeing. You know, the, the, that nine ten combination and seeing how they enjoy it on the big show. And as far as the game of the round is concerned, I, I kind of have my eyes drawn to Chiefs Brumbies tomorrow afternoon, four o'clock. Uh, after watching the Chiefs beat the Crusaders last weekend, I'm sure you didn't enjoy it that much. But after watching them uh, win last weekend, do you think the Chiefs might have it in them? To win the comp this year? Oh, they've got it in them, them every year. There's always nothing in it, is there? You know, it's been so tight in the, the last few years. Um, Chiefs are a, a class side, you know, and um, you saw what, what they did last week against the Crusaders. They just got that mix of brutality when they need it, but finesse and the ability to break the game open, um, you know, through the likes of Damien when, when they need to as well. So, 
Brumbies are a bit more of a clinical side, aren't they? You know, traditionally um, extremely good set piece as well. They'll look to go to that, that driving mall, you know, and, and apply pressure through that, um, build a lot of phases, go deep. So that'll be the challenge for the for the Chiefs to stay disciplined and, and sort of defend for long periods of time. Um, but, yeah, I agree. It's going to be an absolute cracking matchup. Um, you know, it's uh, that on that final Sunday of this big weekend. So, yeah, what a way to finish. And just to finish our chat, you're doing, as you say, plenty of work for NZR Plus, uh, New Zealand Rugby's digital platform, hosting the Front Row Daily Show there over the weekend. Obviously, you were over in France for the World Cup last year. How are you enjoying uh, life in front of the camera, not as a player, but as a as a host and presenter? Yeah, I don't know if you could even call it a host and presenter. <laughs> <laughs> I just... I just, I, I have, we have a lot of fun here. We, we meet all sorts of people. It's a, it's a great way to kind of both showcase Melbourne. You know, we're, we're out and about. I'm, I'm off to the, the market soon to eat dollar oysters and just finished it. Um, there, there's a surf park here, so I got pretty pummeled at that. Um, you know, a nice balance of that. And then, and then we obviously go and chat with the boys and pop into the sheds after the games. Um, the All Black coaches are here, so we're hoping to have a chat with them at some stage, see how they're getting on. Um, and yeah, it's all it's all streamed uh, on a on a daily show over the weekend. So yeah, if you jump on into our plus, um, you can see my mug on there, getting up to mischief in Melbourne. Brilliant. Well, what what better reason do we need? Thanks, mate. Thanks for popping in for a chat this <laughs> afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, Andy. Good on you guys. Yeah, take it easy. Cheers. You take it easy too. Cheers, mate. Andy Ellis, former All Blacks halfback, of course. Uh, one of the great quiz questions. The, the last man to touch the ball in the 2011 Rugby World Cup final. Andy Ellis, of course, just booted it out for the 8-7 win. Yeah, catch all that uh, footage on NZR Plus. It's the uh, digital platform for New Zealand rugby. Free to watch it all. The Front Row um, the front row Show, or the uh, the Front Row Daily Show, as it's called correctly, um, is um, updating fresh episodes every day while they're over there. For more from Weekend Sport with Jason Pine, listen live to News Talk ZB weekends from midday or follow the podcast on iHeartRadio.